Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing my labor and delivery story, if that's what you want to call it. Um, and I am going to be looking down quite a bit because I have my phone here for notes. Um, but I'm going to do the best I can to tell you guys this story without making this video like three years long. Um, so basically, I dealt with the prodromal labor for several weeks since Christmas time. Um, Christmas morning was my first time with the false alarm um, and I experienced several of them since then. I think that I experienced, I think I experienced five altogether. Um, I can't remember if there was six, but uh, anyways, I know at least five of them I experienced and that was really frustrating. So. Going in with that, um, I had a prenatal appointment on the 11th, which was the day before my due date. And I went in and starting at 11 p.m. the night before, I had started having more pressure waves that were um, a little bit more intense than they had been before, but they were still really just inconsistent in the amount of time, like how far apart they were. Um, that went on until about... I would say six or seven o'clock in the morning and then they just kind of stopped and so I was like great another false alarm like whatever um, I don't know just really annoyed that I was experienced pressure waves but that they weren't mm, progressing in into actual like into actually having a birthing time or whatever so um, I went to my prenatal appointment which was at like nine o'clock in the morning and um, I told my midwife about how I was frustrated, but how impatient and whatnot. She offered to sweep my membranes and I said, no, thank you. Um, I didn't do a cervical check or anything like that. Um, went home from that and I just was like, okay, well, um, I was still experiencing some pressure waves, but they were just really spread out, um, but still the same intensity. So I was like, let's do some walking, um, which I've been walking like every day. I was like, let's just do some walking and see what happens. Um, they weren't increasing in how far apart they were, but they were definitely increasing in intensity. Um, I would put my daughter to bed about eight o'clock. That's her usual bedtime. It's about eight o'clock. And um, by about nine o'clock, I was like, okay, I'm gonna try some nipple stimulation and see what happens because my daughter nurses, but she's only stimulating one nipple. And I wanted to see if there would be a difference in having both nipples stimulated. So I pulled out my electric pump. And um, so I sat on the birthing ball and I put on the biggest loser <laughs> um, on my laptop. And I sat at our dining room table and I watched the biggest loser and I pumped um, for, for an hour. So um, at first it wasn't doing a whole lot. For about the first 30 minutes they were still just really far apart. Um, I would say probably 10 to 12 minutes apart. So I probably only experienced like three, something like that. After about 30 minutes, then they started to get more, a lot closer together. By the time that I was done um, pumping for an hour, um, by about 10 o'clock, they were about three or four minutes apart. And I was like, this is great, but let's see what happens once I stop pumping if it, you know, just goes away. So I decided to get up and just start kind of cleaning the house, doing whatnot. Um, and they quickly started coming about every two to three minutes. I still didn't know what if it was going to stay or whatnot. Um, I would continue like squatting during pressure waves. Um, I was trying to stay upright or on my hands and knees, um, things like that. Um, and so what I was doing during this time was just kind of nesting, I think, is the best way to explain it. Because I was just cleaning the house, organizing. I was doing loads of laundry. Um, so I would fold um, clothes and hang them up and whatnot. And, um, and that is how I kind of kept myself up and active during this time. So I had text my best friend and told her what was going on and that... You know, I just didn't know what to think of it. And she said, she was just like really encouraging and was like, well, it's really great, you know, that you're having them. And um, if they start to slow down again, you can always pump and, you know, to keep them going. And I didn't really want to get to that point and I didn't really know what to think of it. So I was just kind of like, well, we'll see what happens. 
by about 2 a.m. they were they had been very consistently coming at two to three minutes um, and then I would get like an occasional break of like four to five minutes apart after I would have a really intense um, pressure wave so I would have an intense pressure wave and then I would have like a four to five minute break before the next one would come on and then um, whatnot so around two o'clock in the morning um, I was I was getting really tired of standing on my feet and that kind of stuff and so I didn't really know I still wasn't like sure that this was happening that this was my birthing time and that things were actually happening um, and so I had a basket of laundry to fold and um, so I sat down on the floor and I decided I was going to just kind of like rest um, while I folded the clothes on the floor um, the um, pressure waves slowed down a little bit, but they were still um, just as intense. Um, and so at that point, like my husband was there with me, you know, and, and whatnot through this entire thing. Um, but we just weren't quite sure. We still just weren't sure what was going to happen. So he was like really tired and he's like, okay, I want to go to bed, but like we both just didn't really know what to do. I had really wanted to have my birthing time while my daughter was asleep because that way then we didn't have to worry about her and um, we didn't have to worry about tending to her while I was having um, pressure waves or anything like that. Um, so that was like ideal for me um, and you know who, who knew what was going to happen but that was just the way I wanted it. That would have been perfect. So what I decided to do was I was going to get up and if they picked up like in you know how often they were coming then I was just gonna stick with it and go throughout the night if they didn't pick up and I felt like I had to pump in order to increase how often they were coming again then I was just gonna go to bed and let them do what they were gonna do so um, I decided to get up and be active again and just walk around the house and pretty much as soon as I did they came back with a vengeance <laughs> like they picked right back up to being two to three minutes apart and um, they were just more intense. By about 3.30 in the morning, I decided to call our birth photographer and I was like, I think this is it. <laughs> and I had her come over. Um, and so she came over, she got over at about four o'clock in the morning and um, you know, just snapping pictures in between pressure waves. I would just, we would just be chatting and talking and then I would have a pressure wave and um, you know, she would either be taking pictures, my husband would be there with me and whatnot, but as soon as the pressure wave was over, I just felt like I like was able to go right back to what I was doing. I literally at one point in time, we were chatting and we were in the middle of talking about something and a pressure wave came and I was kneeling on the ground. We have a sectional, so at the bend in the sectional, I had put two pillows on, on the couch and then a blanket on the ground for my knees. And I would get on my knees and I would lean over onto those pillows. And that was a really comfortable position for me to go through these pressure waves in. And so I would sit on the couch and we were chatting and we were in the middle of this conversation and a pressure wave came. So I got on my knees and I went through the pressure wave and then I got back up and I was literally like, anyways, blah, blah, blah. And we just continued talking and we kind of laughed about it. But it, I felt like in between pressure waves, I was really relaxed and just able to kind of carry about life. And then I got Mercedes, our Chihuahua, you know, because it was while he was on the Lincoln, so I was just by myself. I wanted, you know, I told her she could get whatever she wanted. It's because it's her dog. Yeah, so, and, you know, of course, Yoda. He, he fell in love with her, and then when she had Yoda, that was. That little dude was. It's like the firstborn. <laughs> <coughs> Is he being cared for? Let me get a massage for fixed week. Turn your light switch to on. Go to your special safe place now. Completely mm -hmm. with peace and anesthesia. Fold instantly. And completely around brighten. Yes. 
tension you feel now, the more relaxed you feel now, the more powerful your anesthesia becomes. Much more powerful. The more tightening you feel now, instantly the more anesthesia you feel. Deeper and deeper relaxed. when I really had a hard time catching my breath there. Yeah, he and Mercedes went to the same family. Yeah, they were fortunate enough that they went to the same family. Um, they had definitely by this point gotten to the point where I couldn't walk or talk through them. Um, and m there are cues for the birth partner or my husband um, that he can use to help me stay relaxed. And I had told him before all this started when we were practicing that I didn't feel like I needed him to use those cues until the pressure waves got to the intensity point where I needed to moan. If there was, you know, a point where I would just moan and I wasn't necessarily like moaning all the way through them, but if I had to take a deep breath and a moan came out with him, that was kind of his cue to give me the hypno baby cues that he was um, using. And there were definitely, they had definitely gotten to the point where he was having to help me through them. And that was really helpful because you can be in your mind as much as possible, but having someone else remind you to relax and help you get to your special place and help you, um, you know, remind you of what to relax or remind you of what to think about or things like that. Just the cues that he was using, you know, um, that the hypno babies gives you to use just really helped me stay focused. Um, and I really liked having him cue me when he knew I needed it most. So that was nice. Um, by about five o'clock in the morning, they took like my pressure waves took like a sudden intensity change. They, um, became a lot more intense and I started to feel the beginning of pushing pressure waves. So I wasn't, well, my body wasn't actually pushing, but I could definitely feel a shift. Um, I told, I had called our sitter who was going to be there to watch our daughter when, you know, I wanted our daughter there with us in the hospital, very present for the birth, but we wanted to have someone who could care for her so that we didn't have to worry about that. So I called the sitter and told her, okay, this is happening. Go ahead and come over and meet us at the house. And, um, then I hung up the phone after I hung up the phone, I had gotten to the point where I was very nauseous. Like I had contemplated telling my husband, I need you to get me a pan, like a pot, because I might just toss my cookies right now. I didn't, um, tell him to get a pot and I didn't actually get sick, but I was definitely nauseous and I had started shivering. It looked like I was really, really, really cold. My legs were shivering. My jaw was like quivering. Um, I looked like I was really cold. My teeth were like, um, not my jaw was curving, my teeth were chattering. Um, and so it, I could definitely tell that I was hitting the transition phase, um, or the transformation phase as they call it with hypno babies. Um, after about 10 minutes, um, after I got off the phone about 10 minutes later, um, I called, um, I had my husband call her back and say, actually just meet us at the hospital because I could tell there was a, there was a pressure, um, shift in, you know, just the pressure that I was feeling down there and the, the pressure waves were just getting more intense. And so I felt like it was definitely time for us to start heading to the hospital. Um, and so we were only like a three minute walk away, literally. Um, and so, um, I had him call her back and say, just meet us at the hospital. 
Um, and um, I told my husband to go wake up our daughter. So he woke her up and um, she was very excited because we told her, you know, we're going to be going to the hospital. We're going to be meeting Brighton, Brighton and um, whatnot. So she was a little upset about getting up, but once she knew what we were doing, she was excited. Um, since I had experienced so much, so many false alarms, our hospital bags weren't really packed. All the stuff was like near our hospital bags, but they weren't really packed. So my husband was pretty much like running around. It took him like five minutes, but he was pretty much just running around trying to get everything ready. And um, then we headed out the door um, after about 15 minutes. So it was about 5.15-ish, between 5.15 and 5.30 is when we headed to the hospital. Like I said, it was only like a three minute walk, but I had to stop five times um, because I couldn't like walk through the pressure waves. And it was really funny because it was really, really cold and windy and I'd only grabbed a light jacket because I'm stupid. But um, I, it was really funny because I, well, it was funny, but not at the time. It's funny now. Anyways, I would start to have a pressure wave and I would be so close to the door and it was so windy that I wanted to get inside the door before I had to stop and stand in the wind for my pressure wave. And so I was like trying to walk, take a few steps to get through, like to get into this door, but my, the pressure wave was like building and it was so intense. So anyways, we get into the door and I'm of course like, whoo, you know, like really having a hard time because I was having to move through that intensity of the pressure wave when you, it's so hard. <laughs> Anyways, the staff that was at the front desk at the hospital was like, does she need a wheelchair? And we were like, no. So we get up to L&D, the labor and delivery floor, and I told them that um, I was having pressure waves, that they were about one to two minutes apart because they definitely were, you know, really close together, and that I was already having the urges to push. So they got everything really, you know, they got everything together really quickly, put me into the exam room, and um, they did a cervical check and they said that I was at seven centimeters, 90% effaced, and I was at a minus one station. I was extremely pleased with that. <laughs> when I went in with my daughter, I was only four centimeters, 65% effaced, and I was at a zero station. Um, my goal had been with both of them that I didn't want to go to the hospital until I was eight centimeters. Um, so with my daughter, it was super disappointing. Um, now with him getting in there at only seven centimeters, I was just really pleased because I felt like I listened to my body and that even though I was only seven centimeters, it wasn't going to take that long to get to eight centimeters. I was just really pleased. Um, so they get me all set up and um, I was in the, um, I guess what they call the labor room because you, you, the labor and delivery room and then there's the postpartum rooms, the recovery rooms. So they get me into the room and they gave me the Heplock, um, which basically they uh, put a IV in me, but didn't hook me up to an IV. Um, and that way I could move around. Um, where they put it was right on the bend of my wrist um, instead of like more on the arm. I don't know, they usually stick me more on my arm instead of like right at the bend of my wrist but she put it right at the bend of my wrist. So that was really annoying because when I would want to lean over, I couldn't support myself with my hand bent like this, like um, supporting myself. And so that was really annoying. So I kept having to have my wrist straight and like putting all the support on my fist like this. I felt like a monkey. <laughs> Anyways, um, I found it really comfortable to be on the birthing ball, which with my daughter, it was not that way. I did not want to have anything to do with the birthing ball. It was extremely uncomfortable for me. But I found it very comfortable this time to um, go through my pressure waves on the birthing ball, which was good because the doctor who was on call said that I couldn't do intermittent monitoring because you need special training to do that. And so I had to be on constant monitoring. If I had wanted to walk around, I would have fought that. I would have been like, too bad. <laughs> but um, they wanted to have him and my, my pressure waves on the monitor 24 seven. The problem with that was that while I was on the birthing ball, it was hard to get his heart, his heartbeat, um, on the monitor. So the nurse had to sit there with me and, um, push on the little monitor thing. Um, because just pushing on it a little bit was able to get his heart rate. So about an, so about an hour after we got to the hospital, 
um, my pressure waves became super intense. I was like grunting through them and my body was pushing like so hard. From this point on, the word intense is the only way that I can describe how my birthing time and delivery went. So it was really crazy how intense these pushing pressure waves were. What are you doing? Where are you going? Um, way more intense than any of the pushing pressure waves that I felt with my daughter. Um, so we go through like another hour of these pushing pressure waves. They weren't like, or I felt like it was time to push and like baby was coming out. It was just my body starting to naturally push. Like I wasn't doing anything, but my body was pushing down, um, during these pressure waves. After about another hour of the pushing, um, pressure waves, I felt um, like a big pressure change down there. And I was like, okay, I think we need to, um, check and see what's going on. So the, the doctor came in and this is basically the first time that I saw the doctor since I'd gotten there. And she came in and she did a cervical check and she said that I was nine centimeters, a hundred percent of face, but a zero station, even though the doctor before, cause there was a shift change, um, right before I came in or right after I came in. The doctor before had said that I was at a minus one station and now she was saying I was at a zero station. So that was kind of weird. Anyways, um, she said that she thought that I might be ready to start pushing and that that would help him come down. I didn't know if I was at that point. I didn't really feel like I was at that point yet, but I, I agreed to try. I was like, sure. Um, and I it was really uncomfortable for me to lay on my back. Um, and so I asked her if I could turn to my side and start pushing. And she was like, sure like okay um she thought that was really weird but anyways i tried pushing a couple of times during the pressure wave but i could just tell i could tell it wasn't time it wasn't doing anything and she agreed she told me she was like okay well you still have a little bit to go so keep at it and then she left basically um i was i decided that since i was laying on my side already i was just going to continue laying there for a second because I just felt like I needed to regroup. I needed to rest for like a second. Um, I don't know. I just felt like I needed a moment in that position that I was in. Um, at that point, laying on my side, I had a super intense pressure wave. And um, after the pressure wave was done, you know, and it was still with the pushing um, pressure waves and whatnot. And after the pressure wave was done, um, I felt a little bit of liquid down there. And I told my husband, I said, I either wet the bed, which I had done with my daughter, or um, I I think my water broke. So I had the nurses come in and they checked and they were like, yep, your water broke. So they went out and they told the doctor, her water just broke, I don't think it'll be long from now. And the doctor was like, okay, whatever, and didn't believe them. 